Hello and welcome to ESAPOD. I'm Daniel Skuka. We continue reporting this week from ELA, the Berlin International Air Show in Berlin, Germany, where the European Space Agency is operating the Space Pavilion together with DLR, the German Aerospace Center, and the German Aerospace Industries Association. In February, the Columbus Science Lab was successfully delivered to the International Space Station, and on April 3rd, ESA's first automated transfer vehicle, the Jules Verne, made a spectacular automated docking to the Russian module of the ISS, establishing ESA as a full partner in ISS operations. I think 2008 has been uh, one of the most important year in terms of uh, what we have been able to realize because it has been the, the year in which uh, Columbus has been uh, attached to the space station and started to really work as uh, the European laboratory for microgravity. And also we have been launching ATV, we have been docking ATV to the space station. Now we are one of the key players in the, in the space station partnership and I think one of the key players for the, for the future. Like other space agencies, ESA are already looking far beyond the ISS when thinking about the future of human exploration in space. To land first on the moon and later on Mars in the 2030 time frame, scientists have to have a mix of human and robotic missions to know in advance what challenges have to be met. To know how humans can survive for years under microgravity, to scout landing zones and to develop precise navigation and artificial intelligence techniques. ESA's next robotic mission to the Red Planet will be ExoMars, due for launch in the 2013 time frame, involving a rover that lands on the surface to explore. It'll look something like this. ESA's ExoMars rover is now being developed as a highly autonomous six-wheeled vehicle that will roam the surface, drill down two meters to look for signs of past life underground, this has never been done before, and conduct extensive scientific investigations. Due to the distance from human controllers back here on Earth, ExoMars will have to do some pretty amazing things all on its own. Cover bigger distances, by itself cover much larger distances in, in terms of science, so, so it would give a lot of science return. Have much higher levels of autonomy, so uh, the human operator in the loop will come uh, less frequent and will just have to take specific decisions and not deal with details. So uh, the role will be much, much more intelligent. And uh, to be able also in, in, in the long run to have it, the, the, the rovers operate in much harsher conditions. ESA are also planning to participate with international partners in the proposed Mars sample return mission sometime in the 2015-2020 time frame. But ultimately, the hope is to send a human. What would a human mission to Mars look like? A human mission to Mars is uh, very complicated because we have to, to master uh, two series of problems. One is a technical problem and the other one is problem related to human. Uh, we have to see what we want to master and what we want to be in charge for the future. And one uh, very good example for that is the so-called Mars Sample Return mission on which we are working which consists in uh, sending a probe to Mars, go down to the surface of Mars, take, uh, I don't know, 100 grams of, uh, of uh, sample, bring it to the Mars orbit, then take it from the Mars orbit and bring it, bring it back to, to Earth, which is more or less the type of scenario we will have to do with human, but it will be uh, 1,000 times more complicated. I think that there is no uh, opposition between robotic exploration and human exploration. Uh, they are both contributing to exploration. And, uh, and I think that the, uh, the difference between uh, the robotic and the human is just a question of uh, uh, calendar and, uh, and budget. Exploration is a global, uh, a global challenge. Uh, exploration is, uh, is not for Europe, it's not for the United States or for Russia. It's uh, for all countries uh, in the world because we, uh, we are looking at, uh, at global issues. And, uh, and within that exploration program, where today Europe is not the leader, clearly, except for uh, robotic exploration, or at least some aspects of the robotic exploration. But on human exploration today, Europe is not a leader, uh, because Europe lacks a very significant piece of human exploration, which is a transportation system. And I must say that what I wish is that in the next 20 years, Europe can become one of the leaders in human exploration. But to do that, uh, Europe has to uh, to develop a transportation system. 
what the man on the moon has brought to humanity is the fact that uh, 18 persons have seen the, the Earth uh, from the moon as a small ball uh, floating, uh, floating in the universe. And they came back to say that uh, we have to take care of that Earth. One of the most eloquent summaries as to why humans will continue exploring the universe using both human and robotic missions comes from ESA astronaut Jean-Francois Clairvois, who said, people fear the unknown. The more we explore and know, the less we fear. For ESAPod, I'm Daniel Skuka reporting from the Space Pavilion at the Berlin International Air Show. Thank you for watching.